Okay, so we're going to talk about repentance again and the book of Revelation. The reason why I didn't go into greater detail before is because I wanted to give kind of an introduction to it. And uh, so I did focus on a little bit of the Greek, but from memory. So all of what I was teaching from the Greek was from my uh, memory of the Greek, of those two verses, which is accurate, exactly accurate word for word. So I had that memorized. But what we're doing now is I'm going to go ahead and dig into the context of those verses. We're going to look at what it says in the context of those verses. So the first one's in Revelation 9, verse 20. <coughs> Excuse me. This is surprising for you and for me. A little bit of my water here. So, in the, um, let's see if I've got the rooted word here. I don't think I've got the rooted word written out for these verses. I think I just translated them, so. Um, okay, so anyway, I can pull that up because I put it in the description of the other video. And that video is right here. So, I'll pop that up here and read it from the description. Verse 20, chapter 9, the Apocalypse of John. Revelation. And those left from the humans, like left behind, the ones not slain off from in these poundings out, the word for plagues, that's what it literally means, are not exercising their minds in the midst of the occasions from out of the actions of their hands in order that they may not lick the hand as a dog in worship, the demons bearing fortunes, and the gold and silver and copper and stone and wood idol images, which are not even capable to look at anything, not even to hear, not even to walk about. Okay, so that's the full verse. Let's go ahead and look a little bit back here. So, there's not really much here, but the next verse is what we need to look at, verse 21. The one before is, it's about uh, some of the images and things that are happening. So, but what's really important is verse 21. It says, uh, let me get into the uh, Greek again. And, and are not exercising <clears throat> the mind from out of from out of the, their murders yeah from out of their murders or slayings not even from out of their it's hard to translate this one <clears throat> pardon me Hard to translate this one. It's from our word for pharmacy. And um, a lot of people translate it magic, and, and some translate it as sorcery. It's hard to say. It's literally medication. So it would be not even from out of their medica the medications of them, their medications. Not even from out of their harlotries, their harlotry is singular, and medication is singular also. Their medication, and their, their harlotry, not even from out of their stealings. Stealings, like filching, stealing. Stealings, no, stealings, plural. So they didn't repent from all of these things. So he's listing some things that they didn't repent of. And the, the most difficult one is one for medication. What do you make from that? Well, the difficulty is this. 
some of these, well, a lot of our words come from gr Greek, and so you can see the origin of them, and they still retain a lot of similarity and meaning. Some of them are what are called false cognates. A cognate is like cognition. You recognize, you, cog you recognize the similarity, right? And so we want to feed back the modern meaning into the ancient Greek. You can't do that. That's a fatal error. You can't do that. You have to let the ancient Greek stand for what it meant. If you try to force it into the modern meaning, you're going to end up with heresy. So you've got to be careful about that. Don't do that. As tempting as it is. So when you look at this, this uh, was it Pharmacon? Just a minute. It's, um, no, Pharmakeia. Pharmakeia. And you go, well, you know, it sounds like pharmacy, right? And it says that it is, means medication, in parentheses, pharmacy. That's what it says. And so I would just uh, recommend that you dig in a little bit more and find out a little bit more about what that meant culturally to the ancient Greeks, because they didn't have pharmacies. There was no such thing as a pharmacy. So there was no pharmacist, no pharmacy. The people who practiced anything similar to that were ones who did that in order to cast spells on people. So it, it, it's closer to magic use and sorcery than it is to pharmaceutics. You say, yeah, but Ron, isn't pharmaceutics sorcery? Isn't it magic where they're taking and using chemistry in order to you know, get rid of certain ailments in the body? Some argue that. Some argue that, yeah. And so then, of course, the conclusion is, well, then that means we shouldn't be taking pharmaceuticals. And I'm not arguing against you on that. I take as few pharmaceuticals as I possibly can. If I have a headache, I don't take aspirin. I don't take ibuprofen. I ride it out. Now, if it doesn't go away after 12 hours or 24 hours, then I start thinking about maybe taking some medicine. But I usually don't take medicine until well after 24 hours, maybe 48 hours. But I'll try some other means like, you know, drink more water, rest, relax, get away from electronics. Because electronics can also, especially cell phones that have constant bombardment of EM waves, but also laptops with their Wi-Fi. So just turn everything off for 24 hours, unplug. Do that, drink more water, get vitamin C, vitamin D with calcium, and zinc, for men especially zinc, and uh, rest. Don't eat. Just fast. The only thing that I would eat is some garlic. Chop it up and, and put that in my hand and swallow it with some water. Not whole, but chop it up into small pieces. Put those in my hand, swallow it. Is that magic? No, it's food. Garlic's food. Well, what about the vitamins? Well, okay, you could argue that the vitamins are no different than the pharmaceutics, right? But the vitamins are a natural thing. It depends on what you buy, right? If you buy the natural vitamins, it can be a natural thing. Uh, pharmaceutics are very different. Pharmaceutics are, are a chemical that's designed to trick the body. So that's not what vitamins are for. Vitamins are, are a supplement. They're just providing something that the body's not getting enough of. Whereas pharmaceutics is trying to alter the chemistry of the body. So there's a difference there. And magic and sorcery, this is an altering of the physical reality in order to get a certain outcome. So, but there's a fine line between that because we alter physical reality whenever we engage in anything. Like, let's say uh, the cabinet breaks and you go and you work on it. Well, you're altering physical reality in order to get a certain outcome. So, you know, that principle doesn't really hold up as a measurement for whether it's magic or sorcery. It's a very difficult topic to deal with, all right? 
maybe um, maybe I'll make a video on it, and we'll just hit through every use of this word in the Bible, like I've done with some other things, like Mark of the Beast, right? And that word predestination, and other words too, um, like rapture. I've done you know full treatments of each of these. I don't think I've done all of them for predestination, but I have hit on on the meaning of the word. So anyway, let's go on to the next verse, since we've, we've seen that one. Next verse is in 16, and it is... Well, there's one in verse 9, but that's not the verse. We looked at 11. So we'll have to go back and, and read a little farther back. So verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels. This is King James. So a voice from the temple, a great voice, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men. I bet that's human beings. I keep translating human being men. Yeah, it's human beings. Those atrocious men. Horrible. They are mistranslating things every, t every place they can in this King James. They mistranslate everything. Anthropos is human. It's literally human. I think I got a mosquito around here. <laughs> I got bit down here. Human. Anthropos is human or human being. It's not person because God is three persons, right? But human. It's human. Men. Men. Human. Anthropos. Anthro. Comes from aner. Aner is man. And so when it's aner, it's man. When it's anthropos, it's human. And they don't translate it correctly because when it's, when it's anthropos, it can be men and, or women. When it's honor, it's only men. And here it's anthropos, so it's not referring to men. It's referring to humans. Shame on them. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the human, humans, which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. Okay, very important. Keep that in mind. Okay, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead, doesn't say man, of a dead. And dead is an adjective, which is in the masculine form, and so therefore it must be man, or the, so they suppose. But the problem is that when you look at this, and it says the dead, it's, it's masculine for sure. Right? But anthropos is masculine also. And it doesn't mention aner here at all. The passage mentions anthropos. Therefore, the dead must refer to the dead human. A dead human. Not a dead man. A dead human. They insert the word man in the King James, but they're incorrect. Because the context, the verse just before mentioned the human, which they mistranslated as men, and is masculine. Anthropos is masculine, even though it refers to either men or women. And then when it says, and it became as the blood of a dead, it's a dead human, not man. Because human is the context. And every living soul died in the sea. So you see how careless these people were in their translation. And yet these people go around worshiping the King James Version. It's bad enough that people worship the Bible, let alone worship the King James Version. It's, it's atrocious. They do it out of ignorance. They don't know any better. Then they go and they listen to these people who selectively pull out certain things to where the King James is right and the rest of them are wrong to say, oh, see, the King James is the, not just the authorized version, but it's the version that God with his own hand wrote. Some of them say that. 
So, let's get on with this. And every living soul died in the sea. So the sea, <clears throat> the sea had a vial poured upon it, and it became as the blood of a dead human, and every living soul died in the sea. Everything. The sea became dead, completely dead. Not even a microbe was alive. Everything that was animated became dead. <clears throat> Verse 4, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. The last one said became as blood. This one says became blood. That's very different. So let's go back and have a look at became as blood. And you say, Ron, why are you going into such detail? <laughs> because if I don't, no one else will. And then you don't know what it really says in the Bible. And that detail may make the world of difference between one doctrine and another doctrine, a true doctrine and a heresy. And you can end up in a heresy very easily if you don't pay attention to the details. It's very important. Okay, so here's the word blood. <clears throat> it says, in that verse where it says, became as blood, it doesn't say that. It says, and became blood, or literally becomes blood. Becomes blood it, itself. Is middle becomes blood itself as a dead human being. Okay? And they say, and it became as the blood of a dead human being. It's not that way. The as is after the blood. It's it became blood, and they have the. There's no the there. There's no, there's no the. It says, and became blood as, as how a dead human. And blah, blah, blah. Goes on. And every soul, and every soul And every, every soul living died off in the sea. That's what it says. And every soul living dies off in the sea. Verse 4, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. <clears throat> and not they it and it becomes blood on the fountains on the fountain singular on the fountain and the water like rainwater, that's what it means. On the, on the fountain, uh, into, ah, uh, and into the fountain, and into the fountain from the rainwater. Ah, uh -huh, I see. <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, there's more there. Uh, fountains of waters. See, they make it plural, but it's not plural. Why would they do that? Uh, that's plural, and that's plural. So, all right, it is plural in the nouns, but when you get to the verb, it's singular. So, into the, the currents, or brooks, like streams, the currents. Into the currents is literally currents. Um, 
Cosmos. Uh, it means uh, currents. So you pour it into the currents and into the fountains of the rainwater. So into the currents and the fountains of the rainwater, which is up in the sky. And it, it's singular, and it becomes blood. Okay? That's four. Five. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and blasts, blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. They did not exercise their mind in the midst of the occasion to give him glory. They didn't. Even though he had power over the plagues, they still didn't exercise their mind in the midst of the situation to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. They chewed their tongues for pain. Because of pain. From pain. When you're in pain and you're biting your tongue... Verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. That's the one that I translated. And they are hindering in word or action the God of the heaven from out of their toiling for daily sustenance and from out of their ulcers. And they are not exercising their minds in the midst of the occasion from out of their actions. This is very different. But it says in verse 9 also that they were not exercising their mind in the midst of the occasion to give God glory, even though they knew that he had power over the plagues. Even though they were so stubborn to not give him anything. How are you with God? Are you that stubborn that you refuse to open your mouth and move your tongue that much, just a little bit, in order to say, praise God, thank you for this food. Praise God, thank you for this bed. Praise God, thank you for this sleep. Praise God, thank you for this water to cleanse the dirt from my body. Praise God, thank you for the grocery store so I don't have to go kill my own animals. Yeah? Yeah? There are many things to be thankful for. Praise God. Thank you for the transportation that I can use to get around to places that I would never be able to get around to so often and definitely would not be able to go shopping and get this and that which are made for me and I just give some money and I get it. And praise God that I have this money to give for that so I don't have to pull bark off a tree and construct some sort of clothing of my own. There are so many things to be thankful for. So many things. Praise God. Thank you for the infrastructure of this nation that provides electricity to my apartment. Praise God. Thank you for the infrastructure of this city that takes the sewer and, and the, the poop and the pee out away from my apartment. 
There are so many things that we do not give God thanks for and praise for that we must start doing. How about for our spouse? Praise God. Thank you for my spouse. What are you going to say next? Even though she bickers with me every day. Even though he's so stubborn, he doesn't do what I want. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's not how you praise God. That's how you complain. That's how you complain about another person to whom you're supposed to be loving. No, that is not how you're supposed to do it. You say, praise God, thank you for my wife who oftentimes helps me learn how to be even more humble when I think that I've gotten it and I haven't. Praise God, thank you for my husband that he stands his ground even when I'm trying to move him in the wrong direction. See, what you saw is stubborn. can be that he's being a man because Adam was easily swayed. And you definitely don't want a man like Adam. Or the wife who is a tool of the Lord in your life to teach you even deeper how to walk the Christian walk. Praise God. Or if you're not married, thank God for this family member. Though they don't know you, still, I can see your love through them. They still know how to love. I see their love. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you for the dedication of my family members. If you can think of family members who are dedicated to you, to your well-being. Even if they're not believers, at least there's that character quality. And you should thank God for those good character qualities in those people. There's so many things to give thanks for so that we do not have an unrepentant heart, as it says. That we're able to, to humbly exercise our mind in the midst of the situation. We're able to, with our fortitude, with our courage, move our actions. Just, just that much. Our flesh wants to go this way so hard, but we pull that courage up with our fortitude from the midriff, from the abdomen, and we, we force that action over to where it should be. Just that much. You can't do that if, if you're not giving praise to God. You give praise to God, that builds that courage inside, that fortitude, so that when it is time to move that action onto the right course, you've got that fortitude through the praise of God. Now you know a little bit more about how to do it. May the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.